Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other questions from the audience? There you go. Hello. Hi. I just want to begin with some film, but like it was really good as a demo myself, just watching the, video, the film itself, tears, uh, hitting the heartstrings. So thank, thank you. you for that. It's a great film. And my question would be, um, there's a couple of scenes where the um, indigenous characters, one of the characters mother, uh, there's an umbilical cord or intestine looking thing that they buried into the ground. What was the meaning and symbolism behind that? Yeah, um, that was a, that was written in by Jeffrey, which is a, a practice, a ritual in their community, and actually learned like through Goshen that it happens in so many other communities as well. So the idea of like um, burying the umbilical cord is rooting yourself to the land, so rooting that child to the land itself. Um, so Jeffrey really wanted to make sure that because it's a practice that happens in our community throughout and so she really wanted to depict that and then we wanted to collectively show it without explaining it because <laughs> there's so many things in other films and other communities and cultures that don't get explained but for those who it's for you get it and for those who want to know they'll ask and learn so I think this is a perfect example of that um, but yeah that that is a practice of again just um, burying the umbilical so that you are rooted to the land that you're from. Thank you. Thank you. Now your two actresses up there are on fire. Like they, they got some serious chemistry happening. And I heard Priya say in, on an interview I found on YouTube that she took a picture of Demaree and herself and stuck them together and went, yeah, I can see that happening. <laughs> How, what was it like working with the two of them? They're, they're, they were absolutely electric to watch off the screen. What was it like to direct them? Well, Debra we always knew was going to be in the film from the beginning because it's Debra Jacobs and like she co-wrote it and she was, and Goshen was like, you could, I will give you the okay that you could pass for half person. So we were like, we, you know, we just had that conversation from the jump. Um, Priya, like, yeah, we put an open call out um, and uh, she was living in, uh, where was Priya living at the time? Lebanon? Uh, her partner for work, they were living there, and um, she's she grew up in Malvern in Scarborough, east end of Toronto, but and is a refugee herself. Her family came when she was one during the war to Toronto, um, and after undergrad, she left. She I think in two thousand nine, she left Canada, and she's never really moved back. She's lived in like eight countries around the world, and she does capoeira, and she's just like this dynamic, incredible person who's like taken so many risks. I'm always in awe of like her courage and just her willingness to jump into things, just getting to know her. But yeah, she sent the self tape. I think her brother and her brother's friend had sent her a Facebook posting, which is wild because we I wasn't on Facebook, so I don't know who posted it on Facebook at the time. Um, but they were like, you should submit for this. And she's like, yeah, but I'm not really based in Toronto. They were like, yeah, but you're Canadian. Like you can come here for the filming. And so she submitted and I was like, okay, well, like, yeah, you need to send the tape because I'm, I can't fly you out here for this, for this indie film right now. Let's see the tape. And um, I was just like, the moment I saw the tape, I tell everybody, I just knew she was Malay. Like, I really wanted, she, Malay is inspired by my cousin who plays her mom in some of those flashback scenes in so many ways. And, um, I, uh, my first film was on colorism and shadism, and so a Midland documentary. And I don't know how much folks know about, in particular in communities of color, but my experience, Tamil and South Asian communities, like you always see lighter skin actresses or non-Tamil actresses playing Tamil characters and then them dubbing the language and they don't make, you know, it's just like a mess which is rooted in colorism and shadism. And so I always wanted someone who was reflective of Abi, who was my cousin, because we had a lot of conversations about that, about like wanting to see like real Toronto Tamil depictions of Tamil women on screen. And I just saw Priya and she reminded me of Abi. They're just both tatted and she had this sleeve of tats and this long hair. and. She just has like really badass energy about her. And I was like, this is Malay. Like you're everything that I imagined in my head and it's like come to life. It was really like, it felt very serendipitous and almost like magical. And I told everyone, I found Malay and they're like, okay, well she has to come for like a chemistry read. <laughs> and I was like, I think it's gonna work. 
and she did come into town for a second um, screen, a second audition, and Debbie was there, um, and she left the room, and uh, you know everyone was so inappropriate. Gosh, I was like, she's so hot, <laughs> and Debbie's like, absolutely, and I was like, okay, guys, like we can't talk about her like this. This is not, this is not appropriate. Well, like she was good. No, they're like she's great and she's hot, and I was like, okay, and we told Priya, like Priya knows, we've told Priya, but I think it was such a great sign that everyone was like loved her audition, her energy, and was attracted to her. Like we we walk. That is who Malay is. She's somebody who like pulls everybody in, and I think. You see that with her friends, she's just flirtatious, she's fun, she's unafraid, and then at the same time, she's still like masking so much, you know, through that, through that, through that energy and that performance of who she is. So, um, yeah, as soon as Debbie was, I mean, there were other people who were great, but I think nobody else felt, and we had them read a scene together, and we were all like, like 